so excited to be here. And thank you so much, Vicky, for the great introduction. I am going to start by asking you all a simple question. Have you ever been stuck in a bad meeting? I mean, you arrive on time only to have the meeting start 15 minutes late. There's no clear meeting structure, agenda, or a person in charge. Some people start to offer ideas, others shoot them down. Nothing is really decided and the meeting wraps up as you silently tell to yourself, what a waste of time. How frustrating. Can anyone relate to this situation? I sure can. Meetings are actually a vital communication tool. As a matter of fact, executive, even managers, spend 50 to 75% of their days in meetings. With the trend towards more employee participation in groups and day-to-day decision-making, even employees and supervisors are holding meetings. Leaders and members of ed educational, religious, professional, and other community organization also spend a large amount of their times in meetings. This is why it's important to deviate from hosting bad meeting and learn how to master the art of conducting an effective and productive meeting. With that being said, a good meeting offers many positive results. They should eliminate confusion and uncertainty, generate ideas, and stimulate action. Meetings should clarify and reinforce goals and objectives, define roles and responsibilities, solve problems, and disseminate information. So welcome all to how to conduct a meeting workshop. Given the importance of knowing how to run a meeting and develop leadership skills, today's presentation will give you the necessary tools to help you host an effective meeting and help ensure your audience leaves your meeting with a sense of clarity and feeling of accomplishment. The tips and strategies I will be sharing with you can really work for anyone, regardless of title. During the next hour, we will learn the techniques for leading productive meetings. We will cover topics such as meeting planning, opening a meeting, handling a meeting, concluding a meeting, evaluating a meeting. Starting with meeting planning. The important thing to note here is that a productive meeting doesn't happen automatically. It requires planning, lots of planning. There are, however, five steps you can take to make the process easier and ensure your end result is a productive meeting. There are the following. State the purpose, select the participant, select the location or medium, inform the participant, develop an agenda. We will take a look at each one of those steps more closely in the next few slides. Now, starting with stating the purpose. Every meeting should have a clearly defined purpose. Meeting can be held for a number of reasons, to receive reports from participants, to reach a decision, to discover, analyze, or solve a problem, to gain acceptability for an idea, program, or decision, to train, to resolve conflict, to share information, to gain understanding, to obtain reaction to a problem or a situation. Regardless of the situation, the purpose of your meeting, the purpose statement, should clearly reflect the reason of the meeting. The statement should briefly specify what it is that will be achieved during the meeting, and it must not be vague. So let's take a few minutes to go through an exercise of framing a purpose statement. I will go ahead and showcase how you would write a purpose statement so you have more or less an idea of what it is and how to frame it. So here is the scenario. Your company has revised its employee policy handbook 
especially the areas concerning vacation time, sick leave, and absenteeism. The Human Resource Department decides to hold a meeting about the revision for all employees. So given that scenario, an effectively worded purpose statement for this particular meeting might be, we will be reviewing the revision made to the employee policy handbook for time off, which would include vacation, sick leave, and absenteeism. That's it. Short, sweet, to the point, and specify the reason for the gathering. So let's give it a try. I will read the scenario to you, and you'll have three minutes to arrive with the purpose statement. I will call on and the volunteer after the time has passed. Are you ready? I hope you are. So this is the scenario that you all are gonna be working on. The membership of your Toastmasters Club has declined in the past year, dropping from 28 members to 15, and only 10 members attend meetings regularly. Meeting quality has suffered as a result and the club president decides to hold a meeting with the rest of the executive committee. So given that scenario, an effectively worded purpose statement for that meeting might be filling the blanks. I will give you all three minutes um, to come up with one. Jay or Vicky, if you could tell me when the three minutes have passed, that will be great. All right, again, think about the objective of the meeting. One minute has passed, two more to go. All right. How you guys doing? One more minute left. All right, time is almost up. It's time to start wrapping up. All right, time is up. So I, I don't get to see your faces since I'm sharing my presentation. Um, do we have a volunteer? Um, Vicky, can you take a look to make sure if we have a volunteer or not and uh, unmute that person so that they can present on their uh, purpose statement? Do we have a volunteer? We don't have one as of now. I'll volunteer. Okay. Oh, well, Carlos wants to go, so Carlos can definitely go first. Mm -hmm. 
So Carlos, you have the floor. What will be your purpose statement for that particular scenario that I have described? Is he unmuted? Is he still on mute? Yeah, I'm trying to unmute him and it's not allowing me to. Okay, there. Carlos, try to talk. Can you hear me now? Yes. Well, hello to everyone and good afternoon. Um, so the aim, the aim of our meeting could be to develop our strategy to improve meetings quality regarding membership. I'm sorry, what was that? I couldn't hear you. Oh, well, again, the aim of our meeting could be to develop a strategy to improve meetings quality regarding membership. Okay, meeting quality and membership. Yes, that's that's a good uh, purpose statement. Thank you so much for being so brave and volunteering. Thank you. So it was as he demonstrated, short and sweet to the point. He addressed the problem, which is the membership issues, and as a result, that is impacting meeting quality. Great. Thank you so much, Carlos. Participation and listening during that exercise. Moving along, once you have a purpose clearly defined, that is your meeting purpose statement clearly defined, you need to actually study it and ask yourself, is a meeting the best way to actually achieve this purpose? Now, keep in mind that meetings may not be appropriate or even necessary in some situation. For example, if you can obtain information by email or telephone, Calling people together just to receive reports may not be wise use of your time and money. But if the reports are intended to stimulate thinking and discussion by other participants or provide more information than what can be conveyed in the written report, then a meeting will certainly be more appropriate in that case. Likewise, if your purpose is to only inform people of a minor change or decision that doesn't require much explanation or input, simply sending an email might be more effective. There are three basic types of meeting. Information, get completed the initial meeting preparation and are on your way to holding a successful meeting. So it is meeting day, what do you do? How do you begin your presentation? What is important during the first moment of your presentation? Well, during the opening moments of uh, your meeting, you need to be able to establish a friendly environment, attract participants' attention, and establish the foundation for the discussion so that the audience is engaged and interested in following the rest of your presentation or report. Now, there are a few steps, there are a total of eight to be precise, that can help you assure your success during the handling of your meeting, particularly the opening of your meeting. They are listed in the next two slides that I'm gonna cover. The first one is establish a friendly environment. You wanna try to arrive 30 minutes to one hour earlier. Make sure the room is set up properly and visual aids are in place. Is the lighting appropriate? Is the temperature comfortable? A room that is too hot or too cold will distract participants, so you definitely wanna keep that in mind. If any adjustment must be made, you have plenty of time in which to do so because you did arrive a few minutes earlier. Now, if you're holding uh, your meeting virtually, you want to test the technology ahead of time as well, because nothing kills momentum more at the start of a meeting, like a 15 minute delay because people need to download software, they can get the video to work, etc. So prior holding your virtual meeting, it is recommended to have all participants test the technology, 
and make sure they are comfortable with the major features. Now, once participants do join your meeting, whether in person or online, you want to greet them with a warm and sincere smile. Introduce them to others who may, they may not know. Chat informally with everyone. Make sure everyone is comfortable as much as possible. When people are at ease, they are more open and receptive. Now you want to start your meeting on time. Start the meeting at the scheduled time, even though everyone may not be present. Now, those who are present will definitely appreciate it. And you will also want to be mindful and respectful of everyone's time as it is valuable. And the participant that actually do arrive late may be embarrassed and make it a point to arrive on time for the next meeting. Once you have um, started on time, you want to bring everyone up to date by simply reviewing the events leading up to the meeting and summarize any previous meetings on the subject. Doing so will bring those who did not attend the prior meeting um, the up to date uh, to be up to date. In addition, it will help clarify the intent of the current meeting. Now, you want to start your meeting with an, oh, an attention grabber what we call a captivating introduction. So you definitely want to avoid common openings such as, first, I want to welcome you all here today. Um, it's very generic. If you want participants to stay awake, uh, awake, you definitely want to be more creative. So how you open a meeting often has a great deal to do with the tone of the whole proceeding. What do I mean by that? The first few words you utter and your attitude and delivery will decide whether or not your audience will listen or tune you out. So you definitely want to spend special attention when delivering your introduction and making sure that it's empowering, captivating, and engaging. All right, now that you have found your hook to your opening or your introduction, the next step is to describe the situation or the problem being addressed and how it relates to those attending. So you should clearly explain how the situation or problem arose, how the situation, why the situation is uh, important or the problem is important, Ask participant how the situation or problem affects them. Point out how each participant can contribute to a solution if a problem is solved. Explain the group's responsibility for solving the problem if a problem needs to be solved. By doing all of this, you will bring clarity to your meeting. Next, you want to state the purpose of the meeting. Make sure that everyone attending your meeting knows the reason why. What is the meeting purpose? If you have to, write it on the board or flip chart so that everyone can see it. Now, a good practice is to welcome the group. This helps build that connection with um, the members of your audience. So you basically welcome everyone, introduce newcomers and their reason for attending. Now, guests clearly not known to everyone should be introduced as well. It is often effective to have a regular member introduce anyone present for a special occasion. Lastly, you want to establish a method for discussion. If your meeting will involve a discussion, Establish a plan for proceeding and explain it to the participant. Now we talk about different meeting types. So those are the differences on how you would approach them. In a problem solving meeting, a good method to solicit ideas is brainstorming, where participants generate a list of possible solutions as quickly as possible without evaluating them. Participant then go back and list the advantage and the disadvantage of each possible solution. Or another approach could be the group could be broken out in small groups 
with each smaller group assigned to address part of the problem. So having a method or a plan for addressing the problem ensures an efficient use of the time. Once the meeting purpose and any ground rules have been established, you're definitely ready. Now, every meeting should um, close on a positive note or uh, on a positive accomplishment. And participants shouldn't leave your meeting feeling that another hour has been wasted. Now, there are six steps that can help you ensure that you always close your meeting with a bang. You definitely want to indicate that it's time to, um, to conclude. So every meeting has a built-in time to finish. You even stated your end time when you first announced the meeting. It was in your agenda, it was in your meeting notice. So you definitely want to keep your words when it comes to the timing of your meeting. Something more, um, like, well, we have just a few minutes left to wrap up might be effective. Now, if, uh, if, you, if a problem has not been solved and another meeting needs to be held, you might want to say something like, a lot of good ideas have been offered. Let's think about them and meet again in a few days. Now, once you have ind indicated that it's time to wrap up, you definitely want to review the problem briefly. Emphasize again the general purpose of the meeting in a few words. Then you want to summarize the, the progress made. Review the areas covered during the discussion using a board or a flip chart. That might be a great tool to use. Then you want to emphasize agreements. Review decisions that have been made. Write them on a, ball, a board or a flip chart if you need to. Now, if some points still need to be resolved, review those as well. And form them of the next step. Will you have a copy of the meeting minutes sent to each one of your attendees? If so, by when? Are you to take a proposal um, developed during the meeting to a higher authority, such as your boss or your manager? If so, when and how will you inform the group of the results? When is the next meeting? Definitely do not leave participant hanging. They have spent so much time helping you, so you want to make sure that you keep that communication, that open communication. And um, you definitely need to welcome feedback and follow up during that um, specific step of the process. Lastly, thank the group, acknowledge participant assistance presence, suggestions, information, and ideas. Congratulations. Thank you so much, Marie, for sharing this Toastmasters-based presentation and the wonderful tips with us. We have learned quite a lot starting the meetings on time, having a clear structure for the meetings, as well as having the audience's engagement.